Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Success Coaching Live. Take a minute and go ahead and log in and say hello to each other. We are going to get started with our guest, Dr. Holly Kelly, in just a minute. So feel free to jump in and say hello to each other. Good morning, good morning. There's Dr. Kelly. I know, see, Dr. Kelly, I changed it up for you. I wanted you to feel like you were in your environment. I know how you and Dr. Ke uh, uh, Dr. Ira, yeah, he gets that title today. I know how Ira and you like being outside. And I, let me see if I can do this for you. So maybe you can see the palm tree. Maybe you can't. Um, but you'll hear the green parrots, I'm sure, in just a moment. So go ahead, everybody. Let's log in, and I'll get Dr. Co Dr. Holly Kelly on the line. First, say good morning to her as I fiddle with this one more time. You know, sometimes when you get out of the box, it takes you a little moment to to settle into it. But I think we're good. I think we're good. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, Melanie. I don't know where you're at today. Um, we always have to keep tabs on our Melanie. She travels around the world in 90 miles an hour. Good morning, Regina. Man, y'all need, if you're in the Atlanta market, you need to check out Regina for two, re three reasons, pizza, real estate, and leadership. Or maybe she'll sell you a house, teach you a lesson, and feed you on the way. I don't know, but my kids still talk about your pizza, Regina. Good morning, Todd. Yes, we have Dr. Kelly on the line. Um, I am going to bring her on here in just a minute, but it's going to take you guys to start sharing it out so that everybody gets to know the goodness of Dr. Kelly. And yeah, we changed it up for Dr. Kelly. We gave her a, like a fresh look. Like I thought, you know what? You know, it's like when you have company come, you want to make sure that you put the best table out. You want to pull out the best silverware, the best napkins, your best manners. And so I, I did my best. I hope it works. Let me go find Dr. Kelly. Well, there she is. And so, whoop, did I get you, Dr. Kelly? So I've invited her. You simply swipe across the bottom, find somebody, click the invite. Message now to join up on board. She's connecting. Hello. And there she is, Dr. Kelly. I am. I'd like well, to punch myself. <laughs> can I say something before you even get started? Yes, ma'am. I ma love your backdrop. I do not know the name of that flower, but it is one of my absolute favorites. And I didn't realize, but I'm, I'm matching. It's a hibiscus. We have a whole, like, 10-foot wall. Okay, thank you for telling me. They, they are so gorgeous. They're part of a route that I, that I walk and run. It's gorgeous. Love it. Yeah, it's 10 feet, and there's probably, at any moment, you'll see one of those hummingbirds go right past me. We have a family of hummingbirds. I well, know. as you guys know, when we start Success Coaching Life, we got to have music. And I've been thinking and thinking and thinking. Because I know Dr. Kelly, she's, she's a bit of a romantic, she's a bit of an old school, but I also know Ira, 225 pounds worth of meanness if somebody comes up on her. So I saw, tried to find a place in between. I hope I did it. Let's go. There may be trouble ahead. <laughs> Let's face the music and dance. So let's face the music and dance. I have got to give credit to Dr. Kelly for just jumping in here totally blind, unrehearsed, unready, unprepared, because those that know me know it can go really sidewards really fast, and they're stuck on stage. And so I figured, you know what? We're just going to face the music and dance. We will do that. So let me get this. Of course, Facebook shuts us down. Um, there's also a, I'm, I'm going to tell you what all this is about, and I'm sure Dr. Kelly, who wears her um, Jimmy shoes, will understand. You know when you get that really good pair of shoes, those really nice high heels, and you think you're looking good, and you walk into a garden party, and the grass is wet, and the ground is wet, and all of a sudden you feel yourself sinking in, Thank and you're you. trying to pull it out of the mud. My stool is sinking in, oh. so I may end up... <laughs> I keep feeling myself low. Don't so I'm going to end up having to prop myself up, but we're going to go with it anyhow. Give me just one second, and I'll fix that up. So, Dr. Kelly, I have had the privilege and honor, and see, I'm even doing it, the privilege and honor of watching every morning just pour in perspective, just 
coming up with a nugget. And when I walk away, I'm like, man, she taught me. She brought me back to school. She brought me back to leadership. And you do it in such a gentle, kind, motherly <laughs> wisdom. Way. And people would be surprised to know that you served in the Marines. Yes. You were a drill yes. I was a yes. drill instructor, indeed. I, yes. Dr I'm sorry, drill instructor. Right. You know I didn't do that. Drill sergeants are over in the Army. But, I, you know, I uh, forgive okay. you. <laughs> so she was a drill instructor. So you know that her character is one that she doesn't play. And that's what I love about when I get on a Dr. Kelly lesson. She'll be soft, but at the end, she drops it. She makes sure you're doing your push-up. She's making sure you're doing your miles because she wants you to succeed. So if you haven't had the privilege of checking her out every morning, do so. I mean, really? I, I, my kid, I drop my kids off, and then I catch the Dr. Kelly show. So tell how did you come up with perspective or Dr. Kelly's perspective? And yes, my well, stool is sunk. <laughs> don't sink on me, Eric. Listen, first of all, I really do count it a privilege to be with you because my admiration and my learning curve with you is so similar. So, you know, I, I said the other day that you're a brother from another mother. So I appreciate you. I appreciate you. So, let me tell you, this whole Dr. Kelly's perspective um, began as a fluke. It began as a fluke, but then I recognized that, oh, wait a minute. I think this just might be an opportunity. I think God has given me, this could be a platform. I had never, ever done a Facebook Live. I had seen them. I had never done a Facebook Live, had no intentionality about, oh, and, and here's the plan, and on this day I'm going to open with my, none of that, none of that. Um, I, I just happened to do one and came back and shared a few words with it. And then people, you know, dialogued with me back and forth. And I said, I've got a few things I want to say. <laughs> I've got a perspective on a few things. <laughs> and I, I took it, literally, I took it as an opening from God to, to grant me a, a larger platform. Um, because I really, honestly, from my heart, Eric, and I think you know this, I believe that people do not have to lose in life. And I see too often people Ugh. are not living up to their potential. They're not living into their purpose in part because they think that it takes someone smart or you got to have more and you got to know more people and you got to be, you know, you got to have degrees and and we do that and we transfer it to, well, that's for them and that's for someone else. And he could do it because, and, and we're just walking through life existing. And that saddens me, that burdens me because life is to be lived and experienced and, and not, just a, not just an existence. And I don't like to see people lose in life. So that's my why. And now I would say you're probably over 200 Dr. Holly Kelly perspectives. Oh, yeah. as a matter of fact, yes, I am. I think I saw something like 225 ish, somewhere around there, because I believe and I understand the power of consistency. And, and that is one thing I will say. Well, she's a Marine. Come on, folks. <laughs> <laughs> but that is one of the things that I do admire about you is that I know without fail there will be a Dr. Holly perspective, that there will not be a day that she doesn't get on, whether long or short, and say, this is in my heart, this is in my head, this is in my, my reading today, and I need to set it out there because somebody's hungry, and they'll pick up what they need and move on. And I think that's why after 225, it feels like I can't go without you in my Because <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'm going to something really good and everybody's going to be talking about it over here and I'm going to be like that was the one day I missed what you know How what? Did I, you I just appreciate the first that. five or ten resistance those those first oh I can't do it I don't have anything to say nobody wants to listen to me nobody's showing up the little number in the corner says zero mm -hmm. you know I, I like that question because um I learned this years ago and it's just a mantra that I, I travel with regardless of where I am. 
I don't like the theory, well, if I can just impact one, because I want way more than one. I want to impact that little one deal. I, I don't want just one. God is big enough to, to give me impact over masses. But I also recognize that if there are only two people, they were meant to be there. How dare I cheapen or lessen or minimize whatever is in my heart to say, how dare I? I don't have the right to do that. I think um, God allows people to uh, maximize and, and, and expand their reach when he can trust us. And if I'm going to act a nut because it's only two people, how, how arrogant. That's arrogance. And um, that's a pet peeve of mine. So, no, I carry that mantra, how dare I? Because the numbers are few, who do I think I am? So, so if there's one, and I have done things where there was no one but Holly. Okay, You're pre right. <laughs> it was just Holly, but guess what? There, there's power in consistency. I'm getting better with just Holly. And so, no, I don't have the audacity because the numbers are few. That is such arrogance. I think there were two really big lessons. One, when God can trust you with one, he trusts you with many. And so when we go into this social media platform building, speaking, training, whatever we want to create in our lives, he brings us one and says, let me see how you do. I think and so. If you don't I believe that. Pull in. He can't trust you with the one that he really needs you to make the impact on. So maybe that and how dare you think that your message, I mean, isn't for you. Because sometimes I'll do the zero people. I'll be looking there. I'm like, I'm by myself. And then I'm thinking, maybe I'm supposed to be by myself for this lesson. Maybe this lesson is about me and I've got to get it out of my mouth and into my ear in a way that I can hear it. And so every lesson I, I think you share that every lesson that that bubbles up from us is not always from us, but through us or for oh, us or to us. All of it has to come together consistently. Absolutely. Eric, let now, me say, I, let me just say the, while you're talking. Better you know, for a minute, okay. <laughs> I'm saying good morning to everyone who is joining us and I see so many of my friends and former Marines and active duty Marines out there. Thank you for joining Eric and I. Joining Eric and he's Sorry, bringing I'm me on, so good morning. House. I'm gonna tuck, I'm gonna tuck my shirt in from the back because I know that's what we do as Marines. We fold it and we tighten it and we tuck it so we look tight. <laughs> I'm scared Ivor's gonna jump in any minute. I'm just waiting to see him run in. Well, and y'all, if you have not tight, so he's good. If you have not caught Dr. Kelly on Saturday morning with Ivor, you're missing because he is a man. He's a gentle man. But woo, he's he schooled me a few times on how to be a father, how to be a spouse. He, he brings wisdom that that house is not vacant of wisdom. So I did this game once with Nathan and it was so okay. much fun. I'm doing it again. So because we're on camera and I know things show up reversed, I, I thought ahead. So you remember the Lucky Charm cereal? Yes. So these, you have, um, let me see what I got here. So you got Yellow Moon. Okay. Pink Heart, right? You don't have Pink Heart. Yes, you do have Pink Heart now. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for the green parrots to dive bomb me. Um, Blue Diamond, Orange Star, uh, Red Balloon, or Green Clover. Which envelope do you want this morning? And before you pick, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Okay. My son, filled with words that we use in our house to describe leadership, so influence, desire, curiosity. So I'm going to ask you just to go off on like three to five minutes based on the envelope you pick and the word you find. Ooh, this is so fun. And red balloon, green clover, blue no, diamond. let me have the heart. Let me have the heart. You think that's easy. You think I didn't no, stack. No. You're probably thinking, oh, heart, that means it's love. It's easy. I can no. do love. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I feel like I, I, Lord, hope I don't do my, uh, my um, Miss America mess up. Okay. First of all, everyone who's watching, 
you know Eric did not prep me for any of this. So we just, you know, <laughs> he's off the cuff and I'm just flowing with him. <laughs> I love this. I love this word. I feel like Steve Harvey, like I want to switch it right now just to see what the audience will like. I really want to switch it. I, I have a question for you. No but one I'll say, will know. So you're, no one will know except me, which is too many people. The word is sacrifice. Talk to me about sacrifice. Okay, now see, I think everything happens for a reason. Even this word of sacrifice, because let me tell you something and I'm completely serious. I grew up, even though I didn't realize it, I grew up in a very, as a very, very selfish person, extremely, because I had so much love. I was surrounded by love. I was surrounded by um, parents. I had both my parents growing up, but, um, they made me believe, my mother in particular, I'm telling you, I was grown before I realized that everyone didn't believe they could do anything because I grew up believing that. And so, so it built my confidence level to a, you know, a very high degree very early. So I was never one to say, well, nobody loves me. And okay, that wasn't one of my issues growing up ever. Um, I just never had that issue. But what I also see is that it I developed some selfishness because I took that for granted. I would I assumed everything I got was because, well, Holly is just so wonderful. She's just so sweet. And she is just okay, I presumed that. So where it showed up first was when I got married. Ooh. My husband, so giving, so generous, because that's his nature. I'm so willing to take, always with a thank you, but I was taking up some stuff and just, just receiving it and always with a thank you and a smile, not with the knowledge that I had to reciprocate that. It never occurred to me. Honestly, and as foolish as that may sound, I wasn't 12 when I got married. As foolish as that sounds, I didn't realize it because it was so commonplace. People give, I accept, I take, with a thank you and full of gratitude, but not with the re realization that it should be reciprocal, Holly, give back. Don't you love it? Don't you love the feeling? Don't you expand it when, when people give? Oh yes, well give it back, sweetheart, give it back. And so the marriage was the first place that I learned the sacrifice of giving back and the need to give back. And I didn't learn that until things went askew in the marriage. When people get tired of being taken for granted, you'll, you'll wake up, you will go learn some stuff quick, fast, and in a hurry. You will, <laughs> you will learn it. If they're important enough to you, then you'll get a clue about that. And so we were married eight years before we had our first child. So I had a whole, it was just a perfect setup. I learned that sacrifice and giving back to others it is it is vital if you want a relationship to last if you want a relationship to be fulfilled and life is all about relationships it's all and only about relationship not the stuff in life so by the time the girls came along i was i was i was ready i was i was ready but i think sacrifice um is vital you cannot have strong, vibrant, loving, healthy relationships if you're unwilling or unknowledgeable about the need to sacrifice. And thank you, Joseph. See, Joseph is still on the money. He is, he is on the paper and scribe. Yes, to so, be reciprocal. So here's my question on sacrifice. We all wake up with that intention to be, sac to, to be a servant heart or to give to others or to share to others. How do you keep from slipping back into that selfishness? Because when life gets chaotic and I've got stress and my agenda is the most important and you don't understand how important what I'm doing is, we tend to pull back that, that, that easy giftedness of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Eric, you are so on point. Your questions are great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they really are. 
here's my here's my response to that which is why i speak a lot about accountability partners and having people in your life who love you enough to give you the cold hard truth in your face regardless of where it looks or how it looks regardless of how bitter it may be i believe for me the antidote to falling back into that is remembering how it impacted my husband and how it impacted our life also i have blown relationships friendships now people always talk about and they did me wrong and the church did me wrong and they hurt me well that's not my my theory that's not my story i have been the one to break relationship because i was not recognizing my selfishness i have broken relationship i have broken friendships and that's on me i have been the one to go in there and do that and so and and so because i don't like that because i'm very ashamed of the fact that my my lack of awareness ended in broken relationship that's enough to keep me that's enough to get me straight and so i have people who love me enough to say uh <laughs> slow your roll little girl and i don't even know what that means so i don't, i know you and i have been married for like 50,000 years by now the way it looks um but aside from Ira has there been somebody recently 6 months here that has gone like I'm sorry I'm checking out you ain't giving back what you said you know yes. what I need yes within the last it's been 3 months it's been 3 months okay so so it's not once you become aware it's fixed forever oh no i think just like life as we continue to grow if my natural personality is a strong d a very high d and entj with the, all those initials and everything i'm very very task oriented and i will run over someone unknowingly completely unaware my mouth will say something and i don't think anything of it because i'm I'm not built that way that that would hurt me or that that would be a sting to me. I'm not naturally designed like that. So I have to be intentional to recognize, "Hey, wait a minute, Holly, just cuz that wouldn't hurt your feelings, you hurt that person." You ran right over them, you jumped into it without recognizing that that stung them. So because I'm one way by nature, but my heart desires to impact lives i would be worthless on impacting people if i just went with, with my nature so i have to be intentional to say slow down this is who you this is who you're talking to so you have to deal with this person like this and within the last 3 months a very dear friend told me point blank oh no oh no i have no more expectations of you do you know how deeply that cut me and hurt me because i know my heart but i allowed my nature to take off instead of my intentionality and so i'm working hard even to today i'm working hard to fix that because it means something to me that must be where you did your lesson on assumption because i thought it was a great lesson where you talked we assume everybody knows our heart or knows well, that we meant No go on. You didn't but I did that one? No. <laughs> but but I <laughs> what I thought was really interesting is I always start out the day with good intention as John Maxwell says, but I always end the day at least looking at the dog house if not in it because I forget to sort of share my intention with others and wait long enough for the feedback. That's good. I you know I I for this particular relationship that I'm speaking about we we have many many years of friendship and um and so she you know she absolutely knows my heart and my love but she also um just like taking people for granted like I was doing at the beginning stages of my marriage some people you know intent versus impact so you might intend one thing the impact was 180 degrees different And what stands out to people they don't care about your intention. They're only concerned about the impact that you made on them. And so intention versus impact. 
Intention versus impact. Are we going through life assuming our intentions are having the impact we want? Or are we leaders enough to stop, look, listen, and say, what was the impact? You know, it's funny, when I work with people, I remind them that communication isn't about what you got to say, it's what they got to hear. Absolutely. And so our intention and our impact can be miles apart. And if we're not, like Dr. Kelly said, either shattered in a relationship or leadership mm -hmm. enough, stop and go, whoops, I got to right. go back and fix that. My right. intention was good. My impact was wrong. Thank you, Val. Yeah. Wow. You know, and I will, let me just add this, this addendum, this PS to intent versus impact, because these are, again, where I have learned and, and fallen into holes, how dare I, in an attempt to save face or in an attempt to save, um, in an attempt to save my reputation, how dare I not share the fact that I fell in that hole? You do not want to get in that hole. And let me tell you how I got out of it. Let me tell you how to avoid this. So as a PS2 intent versus impact, we too often judge others off of their behavior and we allow ourselves to excuse ourselves and justify ourselves away based off of our intentions. That's wrong. Oh. It's wrong. See, now you know why I have to get some Dr. Holly Kelly every day. She, <laughs> like, she's, she taught that lesson of in, intention and impact and in the middle is the communication gap and the influence gap and the learning gap and the awareness gap that we all need to, to touch into if we want to have the life of success we're desiring. You know, it's mm -hmm. one thing to live on an island and be by yourself in a, in a soccer ball, and, but we can't live successfully. We can't make impact on other people's lives unless we look into that gap and ask where we're mm -hmm. failing. Absolutely. That's good, Eric. That's good. Oof. See, now I'm sitting here thinking, I just need to sit here and be schooled for a minute more. No, I you're bringing this out. I could do you're like envelopes all day long with you. Uh, maybe we should think about envelopes all day long. But one of the lessons that you taught this morning was about your dollar bills having an intentional impact in the world different than they did previously. You're going to become aware and a steward that this dollar can either go to a, you know, a, a coach purse or a Jimmy shoe or a new hair, new hair, um, or this can go to a scholarship fund or to a school or to an opportunity to learn. Have you ever read Wallace D. Waddles, The Science of Getting Rich? Yes. Yes. That's where you, I, when you said that this morning, I thought she's calling me back. I have got mm -hmm. to understand that this dollar has more impact when I release it into creativity than when I hoard it out of lack of abundance oh, or yes. fear or doubt. And, and to that, I don't know if they jumped on, but they sent me a memo this morning and they want to help you in this journey of learning to release money. And so they're going to come by and get a hundred dollar bill from you so that they can go out and show you that when they go out and spend it and give it away and change the world with it, that it all comes back to you. I love it, Eric. Okay. Because <laughs> you know, if you don't give away, it ain't coming back. Um, it's been a difficult lesson for me because my father grew up during World War II. He was trapped in Germany during the war, so he really has a scarcity mindset, and he passed that on to us. So instead of adopting the scarcity mindset, I swung the complete opposite. I didn't respect money. I didn't honor money. I, mm -hmm. I like, touch it. I didn't want to have accountability to it. I didn't want to even know I had it because I always believed I could create more. And what I realized was I wasn't using it to its greatest impact because I wasn't taking the time to ask where can this $1 make the biggest impact? So I think I'm gonna be joining you in November as you unpack this financial awareness, scarcity mindset teaching thing, because I got lessons to learn. I think we all do. I, I, am, I am so, um aware of the mindset that I grew up with 
this is one thing, this is one thing that I grew up hearing. My mother would always say, now there are five of us, five, I, there were five siblings, I had four siblings. And my mother would always say, you don't leave anything on that plate except a bone. And then the dog is going to get the bone. And so it was just a mindset of there is no wasting anything around here. Don't waste anything. And, um, and that, that rolls itself over into our everyday adult life when, you know, I, I know intellectually I am, I am not hungry anymore. Stop eating. Well, it takes, it is work to not finish and clean that plate because it's <laughs> literally, and so that whole mindset is something that um, has to be changed. We have to be aware of it. You know, money, money has a purpose and you can make it for the good or for the evil, depending on what its mission is. I direct my money. My money doesn't get to do anything it wants to do and leave and float around and be frivolous. And that I don't know. I don't roll like that with my money. It has to have a mission. I love that. So that is your November topic that you're going to well, really just start. The, the whole month of November will probably not be on money, but I take the last five months of the year and divide them into the five segments of life. And the entire month, you work with an intentionality on that area of your life to grow and expand and to learn um, regarding that area. So November for me is the, my financial health, financial literacy changing that mindset so even if the if the perspective is not on or surrounding money i am working on that daily interesting I, well you know i'm going to be there either dropping okay. off the kids or live with the kids Thank you, there's a couple of people doing the morning and they're like who do you have to hear today you know seven and eight they're not totally into it but they know that it's dad's car and dad's driving and dad <laughs> controls the radio so <laughs> love it kid um, I have so I am I you know I could go on for like the next ten hours and I see that like Melanie and Dr. Lowe and uh, Joe and Lisa and and Gail and all of these people are like yeah. can we just keep all day Jeannie I, I know we have to figure out a way to make this happen now what's interesting is I have one of the things that's in my we've been talking about our vision statements and our mission okay. statements in our life and it's always to be in the company of people who are growing. And also to, to, to be able to stand on the stage with these people. And, you know, we've sort of like bumped around and played with ideas. And finally, I said, we're just going to do something. And if it falls flat on its face, we can at least say we stepped in with, into our vision instead of hid from it. And I can tell you, I am. This is Dr. Kelly. When she's happy, she'd be punching on eyes. Yes, I do. When, when they got married... He was 160 pounds. The only way he survived that marriage is he went up to 225, and it's all on one side. Oh, like he drives it's all on one side. So she's like, oh, I got an idea. Honey, did you know? Honey, I'm so excited. And so that poor man, he has built that up. It's leather over here. <laughs> leather over here. That's funny. Um, so I am punching myself that I was able to share this morning with you. You have dumped intentionality. You have dumped impact versus intention you've dumped awareness gaps you've done money has to have a vision you have dumped so much on me i think i'm gonna to have to listen to this and replay take notes listen to it again and replay um but would you because i hate to keep everybody all day would you do the legendary the famous the <laughs> dr kelly one and only sign off y'all I love this. This makes me feel good all day. And I feel privileged that I get to share it with you live with Dr. Kelly. Will you? I, I absolutely would. But Eric, thank you so much for asking me to come on. This was a lot of fun. This was so much fun. Thank you for Can we do it again next Friday? Us? Are you free <laughs> next Friday? <laughs> no, once is enough. <laughs> no, a lot of fun. I'll have to have you on with me. Um, uh oh. But until that time, listen, take real good care of yourselves. I love that. Don't you all love that? Let's I mean thank that. you, Doc. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for adding and sharing. Thank you for the wisdom that you pour in so unselfishly to all of us each and every day. I want you to know from my heart.
my true heart, that you're not only, your intentions are heard, but the impact you're making is not only on me, but to my family. And I know that you believe your mission in life is to make an impact on others, and you are living that mission fully into my life. So thank you. Thank you fully. And until you and I get together, you take real good care of yourself. You hear? I promise. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I want to thank everybody that joined me this morning for Success Coaching Live. I know we went long. Dr. Holly Kelly is a special, special treat. I may have to get Dr. Or Joe or Dr. Lowe on or some of you others. If you want to do this on Friday, I'm open for it. It turned out to be just a spontaneous little fun thing. And, you know, I've, I've always teased Dr. Kelly I was going to have her come and join me. And this is as close as we could get. So let me know. Thank you to me. I have got to jump. I've got coaching clients and other clients to consult with today. What I want you to do between now and the time we get together Monday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern is go out and live life with success today. Bye-bye, and thank you, everybody.